Welcome to Andrew's Workshop Projects, part nine. In my workshop this time with my friend Andrew, and I'm piping a water preheater economizer tank to a Stuart 504 boiler and a PM Research hand pump. In this episode, we compare our action man figures to show the difference in scale between two types of action men. This is Andrew's 504 boiler, and next to it is the water preheater condenser also known as an economizer. At the heart of the system is a PM Research hand pump. I've fitted a pair of adapter pipe unions to it to convert it to the ME style that I use, 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. This is a very unusual and quite frankly not particularly brilliant economizer design. Over now to some live workshop audio as I attempt to explain to Andrew how it works. Exhaust from the steam engine goes down the coil and into the bottom and the water comes out here to the pump because you fill the top half with water and then the bottom part is the condenser. You can drain the condenser by using this tap. So in order for this to work I need some adapters. So we need a pipe to go from there to there Union cone adapters are very useful things to have in the workshop. In this case, on the water outlet at the side of the tank, the unit is fitted with a 3 8 by 32 union. I'm using an adapter cone to allow me to use 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe. This episode is a bit back to front. The parts are not mounted in the correct position, they just sat on the bench. The first thing I need to do to the 504 boiler is remove the blanking plug. And this is a bit of an anomaly. The original thread in the bush in the boiler on this very old 504 boiler was 5 sixteenths of an inch at 26 threads per inch. But at some time in its history, it's been fitted with a check valve, which is 32 threads per inch. So the threads are neither one thing or the other. And that's what I'm currently fitting. A commercial check valve, which is 32 threads per inch. I cleaned out the hole first using a tap and it fits perfectly. I had to use a shim washer to get it into the right position and I'm tightening it up as you can see here. And thanks to Loctite 542, the paint on the hexagon part of the check valve is instantly removed. In this clip I'm cleaning away the surplus Loctite 542 to stop it dissolving any more paint. The first thing to do is to establish the layout of the components. It's all in the planning and that needs to go there. I need to put a pipe between there and the bottom of there. What width is that copper pipe, Keith? Three sixteenths, is it, that pipe? Three sixteenths OD. Yeah, OD. It's standard brake pipe yeah. in car shops. And what union would you use for that? A union to suit a uh, three sixteenths pipe. Or, which normally three sixteenths pipe is for five sixteenths by thirty two union nuts. But you can use them on 3 8 by 32 with an adapter union. I already explained that, but a second time will not do any harm. You can have all the videos in the world, but you can't be sitting next to the boat doing yeah, the job. On, on this, I think you can ask questions. In no time at all, I bent up the piping and completed the job. Are you moving full stroke? And here I'm trying to encourage Andrew to pump the water into the boiler, which as you can see, now is doing just that. And now it's action man time, although we're not just playing with them. In this sequence, I'm trying to show the importance of having an action man that is to scale, not one of the newer ones, which aren't. First, this is my action man. Watch his eyes. Oh, he's got eagle eyes, has he? Yeah, I like yeah. that, I did. And now it looks like he's come off Tracy Island. Looks like a thunderbird. Anyway, the thing about my action man that's good is his hand is the scale. Right, and he's looking down there, and look, 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 look at his hand. It's the scale, it's on the valve. At this point I would like to say that this valve is not to scale, it's a little bit over scale, as can be seen by the size of Action Man's hand, and this is the whole point. Sometimes it's a compromise between the physical size of components so that they can be successfully used by full-scale human beings. Playing with action man. This is my sort of scale action man and his eyes move 
and also my action man can move the hand pump. Andrew's action man is much more brutal than mine. My action man is sort of to scale. He looks like a, a real human. If you look at his fingers and his nose, for instance, you could imagine that this action man could successfully pick his nose or insert a suppository without any injury, because all of the body parts present are in scale with each other. Hang on, just let me check. No, there's nothing down there. Right, so it looks like a human, more or less. Now let's look at Andrew's action man. I don't quite know what's going wrong with this action man. He's got a very chiselly sort of an American superhero face. Andrew's modified his finger. The other hand is spring-loaded, but look at the difference in the size of the hand. Yeah, but you see, my action man hasn't been hung. Yeah, but yours isn't an action man deserter. That's true. They're very useful for scale. I mean, they're both the same height. Are they? I think so. Let's use yours and we'll stand him next to the, bot to the, to the boiler. Yours stands up better than mine. Mine's a bit, a bit. And so you can see that if it was stood in amongst this this lot here. God, he's a bit weak, yours, isn't he? Yeah, he's a bit, he's a bit wishy-washy. There we go. That's a good shot. So two action men, but both very different. And once again, have a look at the hands of my action man, and that is the size I would look at. He looks like a homeless person, to be honest with you. He doesn't look like he's, there's any action at all. You think he's SAS? I don't think his legs are right. No, they're not. They're, they're broken. I hated these things. I never had one as no, a kid. No, I didn't though. really. I, I, didn't, I, I, bought really... The, I bought that, believe it or not, to scale a boat up that sank in the Norfolk Broads. Well, yeah, I bought one to sit in a steamboat. Exactly. As the driver. So you can now lift that, keep it level because it's full of water. Off. I put my action man away and Andrew left his laying on the bench. He is taking the water tank condenser economizer unit and putting it in his car. To finish, I'm changing the subject radically. My experiments with leather belts for driving dynamos on steam plants is still underway, although in my opinion I have found the best solution so far. It's a thicker belt with three staples in to hold it together, and it looks the part. And it works. All that remains is to say stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.